Lightroom is a program developed by Adobe that allows you to organize, call, and edit your photos with ease. Using its variety of tools, Lightroom allows you to have all the powerful tools within clicking distance of your mouse or tablet. But how does one get started in Lightroom? The best way I've found to describe Lightroom is that it's like Photoshop, but built with photographers in mind. Adobe Photoshop has an extensive list of tools and features, but can sometimes get complicated if you're not terribly familiar with the menus and software. This is because Photoshop is developed for everyone. Whether you're a graphic designer, retoucher, or photographer, Photoshop has the tools you'll need to create all the work you'd come across in your job. Adobe Lightroom, however, is built solely for the digital photographer. Because of this, they're able to only display the tools you'd need if you were a photographer, making the entire process of editing photos much easier than with Adobe Lightroom. This is the basic layout of Lightroom. It is broken into five different sections. The menu up top here, the navigator sidebar, the develop sidebar, the timeline, and then of course your main menu right here in the front. Across the top of Lightroom is the menu bar. From here you have a few different menu selections to use, so let's take a quick look at e what each one of those does. The first one is the library menu. This is where you'll be spending a large amount of your time calling through the images from your photo shoots. Using a grid system, you're able to go through quickly and mark and flag your images for later use. The basic layout of Lightroom is broken into five different sections, which are all collapsible and expandable with ease. The first one is the menu system here. The menu has broken it down to library, develop, map, book, slideshow, print, and web. Let's go through quickly and describe what each one of these is. The library module is where you'll spend most of your time calling through the images from your photo shoots. Using a grid system, you're able to go through quickly, mark, rate, and flag the images for later use. You're able to do some light editing using the quick develop menu here on the right. Ultimately, however, this is the dialog typically used for calling through your images and quickly rating them with ease. The develop module is where most of the features within Lightroom come into play. By clicking into the develop module, you'll see that all the panels have changed to more intuitive tools. In the develop menu, you're able to go through and quickly adjust sliders to change the look of your images. White balance, for example, exposure, contrast, and everything from vibrancy to split toning, sharpening, noise reduction, and camera calibration is found within the development tools on the right. On the left is where your presets come into play. What presets are are essentially like actions for Photoshop, allowing you to quickly edit the photos with the click of a single button. Presets are available to download and purchase online from a variety of websites. All of the editing within the develop module is non-destructive, so you're able to go through your history and go back and forth between different changes you've made in the image. The next module is the map module. From here, you're able to manually geotag each of your images depending on where they were taken. For example, this photo was taken in Ann Arbor, Michigan, so I'm able to click and drag the image there, which will then add the GPS coordinates to the image metadata. The book module is where you can quickly and efficiently create albums of your images. Using a basic drag and drop system, you're able to add images to each page and adjust the layout of the book on the right hand side. From here you're also able to quickly send the book to different vendors for printing. The slideshow dialog works similar to the book dialog and this allows you to quickly make slideshows for presentation. By simply adding the images to the slideshow you're able to quickly press play and a full screen slideshow will come up on the screen. You're also able to add identity plates, watermarking, and text overlays to each of your images. The print module is pretty self-explanatory. This allows you to prep your photos for printing, assuring that their size, color space, resolution, and all other settings are correct. And finally, the web module allows you to quickly make galleries to present your images on the web. Using a variety of different templates and more that you can download online, you're able to use both flash-based systems or HTML systems to quickly make a gallery for your images. Continuing on with the different sidebars is the navigator sidebar. 
This is going to show you a quick live view of the image that you are working on and shows you the adjustments made to it. While in the library module, you're also able to go through different folders and select the images that you would like to work on and when. On the develop module, it changes and this is where your presets will be as well as your history and smart collections. On each other module, you'll still see your smart collections which are available and allow you to add images quickly to a collection of your choice. The next sidebar is the develop sidebar. While in library mode, you get quick development tools. This allows you to quickly change the tint, white balance, exposure, clarity, and vibrance. It also allows you to change the metadata and add comments and keywords to the images. While in develop module, this is where all the real tools come into play. From here, you're able to select different aspects of your tonal range on the histogram up above and adjust them with ease. You're also able to adjust hue, saturation, vibrance, highlights, shadows, and details. The best way to learn how to use this is to just play around and see what you can come up with. You're also able to crop the images and straighten them using the crop tool. This also allows you to use the spot brush, which allows you to quickly remove aspects from the photo, as well as adjustment brushes, where you can selectively adjust exposure, white balance, and so on. Along the bottom of Adobe Lightroom is the timeline. This allows you to go through and quickly change the image that you're working on. From here, you're also able to organize them by rating, by color, and by flags, and so on. This allows you to quickly edit multiple images with ease. The final part of Lightroom is, of course, this main screen here. From here, you're able to adjust the image that you're working on, and it does adjust based on what module you are in. For example, in library mode, it is default to this grid setup, which you can adjust here by making them smaller or bigger. In the develop module, it does stay to the one image. And from the map, book, and slideshow, it adjusts to best fit your needs for those modules. Hopefully, this guide has provided you with a basic idea of how Lightroom is laid out and given you some basic understanding of how the system works. If you're unsure about bringing Lightroom into your workflow, I recommend you download the free 30-day trial from Adobe and give it a shot. Thank you for watching.